So, uh, this podcast is going to be probably pretty serious. Um, not like the, uh, the previous ones were nothing but, uh, you know, chuckle fest, but, um, old, uh, cunty McFuckface over here got accused of being a harasser of women and abuser of women, uh, sexist, um, what else? I don't know. Whatever the derogatory term, uh, you can come up with, uh, that feminists use, uh, to accuse, uh, guys when, you know, when they disagree with them, because, uh, that's all I'm guilty of doing is disagreeing. But, uh, you know, let me set the stage for you. Okay. So I'm on Twitter, of course. And, uh, you know how those, uh, you know, the hashtag me too, um, thing is going around where, you know, women are, uh, you know, they kind of come together and they're sharing their experiences. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of, I mean, it's fucking frightening that, uh, that so many women go through such horrific shit. Um, and see, and this is how I know that, uh, that these women on Twitter, I know that they don't, I mean, you know, I don't expect them to know who I am. I mean, I'm just some fucking random jackass that, uh, you know, got their, uh, got their dander up, but if they listen to my podcast, maybe not, I don't know, maybe not the last one, I don't know, you could listen to the last one, I, I think it's pretty clear in, uh, in any podcast that I make, whenever I, uh, talk about, uh, you know, like women's issues or whatever, that, uh, you know, if there's one person or one man, uh, that definitely um, understands what you're going through, but at the same time, no, I don't know. Where was it? Where where should I go with that? That I mean, I have a daughter that I treat like a absolute princess, but I also make a point to um, make sure that she doesn't, you know, she doesn't experience any of that sort of, you know, girls can do this and only boys can do that stuff. I mean, I've taught her how to, uh, you know, change the oil on her, on a car, not on her car. She's only 13. Um, you know, change the tire, do a tune up, change the brakes. I taught her how to throw a baseball, how to, uh, throw a football. Um, you know, I've also instilled in her that, you know, cause she's a, you know, she's an attractive little girl, um, that it's important that, you know, while it's great that you, you know, that, that you are attractive, that you must also, um, uh, how can I say this? You know, you must also be able to use your brain and, you know, and, and first and foremost, you should always be a good person. If any of these women that made these accusations knew anything about me, which granted, I don't expect them to, obviously they look at my, uh, my Twitter account and I've got the, the, the middle finger as my, uh, avatar. <coughs> um, they look at the fact that I'm not just immediately jumping on board with, uh, you know, the, uh, poor you. And they assume that I'm just some sort of fucking asshole. I get it. I 100% understand it. But the problem is that if if they knew me or if they've listened to this podcast, they'd know that uh, what they're accusing me of or what they accused me of doing is horseshit. Um, so let me just explain what the fuck happened. Um, I, I think I've mentioned uh, part of this in, um, in a previous podcast. But, um, so basically there's, you know, that hashtag me too fucking shit going on. And then there's this lady that, uh, you know, she, she, uh, tweets out that, um, that she was sexually abused because her 
um, husband, who's now her ex-husband, um, ejaculated into her and got her pregnant. Now, I know that that's, I mean, that's very rudimentary. So let me uh, make it a little bit more clear. Um, she agreed to have sex with this guy because, you know, I assume it's because it's her husband. Um, she was, I assume, although she's never offered any clarity here, I assume that this was sort of like, you know, breakup sex. And, um, <clears throat> and she got pregnant or she, um, yeah, she got pregnant, ended up getting an abortion. But apparently the guy, you know, according to her said, uh, you know, that he meant to get her pregnant or some shit. I don't know. <clears throat> now on the surface, you could say, yeah, well, the, the guy's a dick. If that's what he did, the guy's a dick. You know, I 100% agree with that, but and here's what got their fucking dander up. When two people have sex, whether it's a guy and a girl or, a, well, I guess it's just a guy and a girl or a guy and a guy because, you know, women can't really penetrate each other with anything other than fingers and toys. But um, when you agree to have sex with somebody, it's up to both of you to be responsible for... Um, you know, protection, you know, if, if you're, if your concern is, uh, you know, you don't want to get pregnant, then you should probably make sure that the guy that you're having sex with, you know, is wearing a condom. Now I had said, uh, throughout my back and forth, uh, with this lady and others that, <clears throat> you know, had it been a case of he was wearing, you know, I didn't say it specifically, but if he had like, fucked with the protection, right? Like he had poked holes through the condoms or, or told her she was wearing, you know, that he was wearing one and then he fucking took it off. I think they call it a, I don't know. There's a new term for it. I don't remember what, what it is, but, um, <clears throat> if he had done that, then I'd be 100% on board on her side. But what happened was, uh, I guess apparently they were doing the, uh, the pull out method, which, you know, I assume that, that her, or at least her little minions <clears throat> are listening. So, um, hopefully I can make it a little bit more clear. I know that sometimes context is lost, uh, via Twitter or text. So, um, the pull out method is not an effective method for pregnancy prevention. And... Um, I guess that's the, uh, the, the form of protection that they were, um, you know, using. So, you know, maybe he, he busts a nut on purpose. Again, this is just, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say it's, it's her work. Cause if that's what he did, then that's what he did. But you still carry some responsibility for making sure like if you're, if you don't want to get pregnant or you don't want to catch a sexually transmitted disease, then it's up to you and not just the guy to make sure that doesn't happen. If you were worried about getting pregnant, you should have made him wear a condom or not had sex with him. You know, yeah, maybe he had some nefarious, um, uh, plan. Although it's, it, it's a little strange that he would assume like, you know what, all this time that we've been married and I, uh, you know, and, and, uh, you know, apparently I fucking, um, have pulled out, uh, this time I know for certain that if I, uh, you know, how can I say this without being crude? I don't know. Fucking ejaculate. I, it just, uh, that sounds so clinical. I, I hate fucking saying it, but you know, uh, he was so certain that this last, last little fucking run, you know, was going to work. I just, there's something about the story uh, to me that, that doesn't seem, I don't know. There's something fucking fishy, but regardless of that, I, you know, the thing is, I've never said that the guy was, uh, you know, innocent, you know, he could be a dick. Sounds like a dick. If, if even half of what she said uh, is true, then the guy's a fucking dick. I'm 100% uh, with you there. 
but that does not absolve you of your responsibility, your shared responsibility. I would say the same thing if it were a dude, right? If, if it was a dude complaining that, you know, uh, that fucking, he didn't want to get, uh, or he didn't want any kids or whatever. And then he, you know, went fucking raw inside a girl and, you know, ejaculated, Ugh you know, then it's also his fucking fault. Or if, or if it's a case of, uh, you know, she said that, you know, oh, I'm on the pill or whatever. And, and, and she fucking didn't, uh, uh, didn't take it whether on purpose or, or not. It's still up to him to also take care of that, you know, of uh, preventing pregnancy or disease or whatever. It is up to both people. And this is the thing that this lady and her little minions never seem to, uh, want to accept, you know, instead it was, you know, there's a, uh, I don't know. One lady said that consent is fluid and, 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 you know, all this other fucking horse shit. And it's like, no matter what you, no matter what excuse or, or how much you try and make it seem like, like you had no skin in the game, I'm never going to, um, I'm never going to, to agree that you're 100% a victim here because you agreed to have sex with him. Now, if he had forced you to have sex, then yeah, I would say, you know, I, I mean, t if he had forced you to have sex, then I, we wouldn't even have had the discussion because it would have been, you know, obviously that's fucking abuse. If you were scared into having sex with, with him, abuse again. But as far as I know, at least based on, uh, the, the, the tweet, it seemed like you were all on board with having sex. And then you got a, a little, you know, going away prize that you didn't fucking want. And then you had to get an abortion and you're upset with him because that happened. And yeah, he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have uh, came in you, but you also should have made sure that he was wearing protection. It's not a case of, you know, protection is always on guys. And the same thing goes for guys. You shouldn't always expect, you know, the girl to, to have taken the pill or to be wearing the fucking patch or have that IUD or, or any of the other fucking things, you know? And I mean, like a little extra thing for guys, you know, uh, for, for men that are listening to me. I mean, obviously if you're, if you're a young guy and you haven't had kids yet, then this doesn't apply to you. But if you are somebody that's decided, I mean, even if you are young, if you decided you don't want to have kids then just go get fucking neutered. Don't put your woman through, you know, having to take fucking pills or, uh, you know, have things inserted inside them. Don't put them through that shit because it, it fucks with their hormones. You know, when they're on the pill, it, uh, you know, sometimes it, it prevents them from having, and I don't know, maybe it's all the time. You know, obviously I'm not a woman, so I don't know this for certain. I've just sort of heard it through discussions with, uh, you know, with, with ladies that, you know, when they're on the pill that sometimes it stops their, uh, their, their monthly thing, which is, you know, for the whole reason that women have the, the period. Well, it's not the only reason, but part of the reason that women have periods is it's sort of an internal cleansing and taking the pill can disrupt that. So if you're, if you're certain that you don't want to have kids anymore, fellas, then go get snipped. It's not that big of a deal. It takes like 15 minutes in out, you know, and if you're like, well, why can't she uh, go get her fucking tubes tied? Because in order for her to get her tubes tied, it's like a, an incredibly invasive fucking surgery versus you sit down in a chair and they make a, you know, like not even a half inch incision in your nutsack, which I know, I know it sounds horrific. I've had it done. And I'm not going to say that it, it fucking didn't, you know, it didn't hurt it. It hurt a little bit, but not as bad as you're imagining it. And to be honest with you, I was only really sore for like half a day. And after that, I was good to go. You know, it takes 15 minutes to do that versus having her or forcing her to go to the hospital and go through this like, you know, incredibly invasive surgery. So fellas, you're just as responsible for shit as the ladies.
But for some reason, with these ladies that I uh, that I'm arguing with or was arguing with on Twitter, it's like they, you know, they refuse to take any sort of responsibility for you know for what happened. And then, of course, you have the 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 sort of residual women, the minions, that have decided that you know they are now going to speak for her. And, you know, act as if they were in the room when this all transpired. And, you know, at the end of the fucking day, I'm being called a harasser and, uh, you know, that I'm insensitive and that, that I'm the reason fucking rape culture exists. And it's just, it's a lot of fucking horse shit. And what it really kind of boiled down to after a while was they just wanted me to you know, cause I mean, I was literally getting fucking messages, uh, left and right from about five or six different women, all upset with me. And it boiled down to, I got this, the one last, uh, last fucking message that I, uh, that I even looked at. I'm sure that they're still messaging me. I don't, I don't really give a shit. Um, the last one I looked at, uh, this lady was like, why can't you just say you're wrong? And I'm like, that is the reason why I won't, because it isn't about, you know, it isn't the fact that I'm not making valid points. It isn't about that. You just want to fucking beat me down into submission just so you can feel a victory. And I'm sorry, I will never do that. I will never, ever just give in because you are a lady. If you're wrong, then you're wrong. If I dis- It's okay to disagree with you, in case you're listening. It is okay for a man to disagree with a woman about things. In this instance, I disagree that the fact that you got pregnant after you uh, decided to have sex with a guy, I disagree that you're not, res- you know, you're not partly responsible for that. If you agreed to have sex with him, if you allowed him to go into, you know, to penetrate you without a condom on and you're, uh, you're banking on him, you know, kind of fucking rolling the dice on whether or not he's going to be a dick. That's on you. It's also on him, but it's also on you. And that's why I will never just say, all right, you're right. Cause you're not right. Now, if you feel violated, fine. You can feel violated, but from what I read, it doesn't really, it doesn't really equate to being violated, you know, cause you could have prevented that shit from happening from the beginning. You could have said, you know what? I don't want to have sex with you. You could have made him put on a condom. You could have done those things. And yes, he could have done those things as well, but that's my point. Both of you are responsible for preventing pregnancy. So you can't, you know, so this plain as victim card, I just, I can't do it. I can't fucking agree with that. And when I got that message, they, oh, why can't you just say your son? I'm not going to, because I'm not wrong here. Both people are responsible. Now, if it's a, like I said, if it was a case of he forced you to, or you were scared that if you didn't, that, you know, something was going to happen, you know, if you were coerced, then yeah, okay, fine. But if you agreed to have sex, I'm sorry, you are just as responsible for making sure that you don't get pregnant as he is. And it's wrong for you to just put it all on guys. Because, you know, this girls do this all the time, right? I mean, guys do it too. I don't want to give the impression that I think it's only women out there. You know, guys are guilty of this shit too. You know, we say stupid shit like, oh, let me put, you know, just the tip in. And, you know, we know, we, we know that we have no intention of just the tip. Although if you are the kind of guy that does that type of shit and, you know, you put the tip in and you decide to go uh, even further, then, yeah, technically you are now violating that woman. I will 100 percent agree with that. That's something that, you know, I've never fucking done, but I know that fucking guys do that shit. You know, and and if this, you know, if the lady that I was, uh, you know, going back and forth with or any of her minions are listening just go back and look and listen to other 
podcast, you will see that it is not a case of I want to blame the fucking victim or I want to harass somebody or abuse somebody. I come at it from basically, you know, just a logical fucking sense that if you agree to have sex with a person, you are also agreeing to be partly responsible for preventing pregnancy and the spread of, uh, you know, sexually tra tra uh, sexually transmitted disease. You are, you know, it's two people having sex, not one guy or not one person having sex with, uh, you know, in an inanimate, oh God, I can't fucking talk today. You know, it's not a guy having sex with, uh, you know, with a fucking doll. You have just as much responsibility for your well-being as he has for his and yours as well. You know, I mean, it's, I, that's why, that's why I won't just be like, okay, you're right. You were right. Cause it's like you, at this point, you're not even really, uh, you're, you're not concerned about whether or not what I'm saying is valid. You just want me, you know, to, to fucking bow down and, uh, you know, and submit. And I assume that, that, that you and, uh, you know, and of course this is an assumption. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but you and the other ladies that were, uh, bombarding me with fucking bullshit yesterday, I assume that you're the type of women that just, you know, you, you, um, uh, I don't know. I assume that you're with the type of guys that j just after a while, after you've browbeat them, they'll finally just be like, fine, you're right, whatever. And that's the thing. I'll never do it because first of all, I'm not your boyfriend. I'm not your husband. So I don't need to fucking, uh, you know, submit to you. And if your only fucking argument, I said this in, in Twitter, if you're only, if your only position in this, uh, in this debate or whatever it is, is you can't disagree with me because I'm a girl, then you don't have a fucking leg to stand on. You really don't. You might feel violated. And I will agree that, okay, yeah, if you feel that way, you feel that way. I can't deny you that. But the reality is that you, that, that somebody didn't just make you pregnant. You allowed that guy to have sex with you. You decided to not take any step whatsoever to make sure that you didn't get pregnant after that. Yes, he's a dick for if he agreed that he wasn't going to fucking bust a nut in you and he still did. Yeah, he's a dick. But that doesn't remove your responsibility. And that's all I was getting at. And that's the whole reason why I will never just be like, fine, fine. Because I don't have any reason to, because your argument is based on nothing but bullshit. And the fact that you, that you, you know, you, you fucking make these like retweets where you, you know, you sort of just pick the, uh, you, you cherry pick shit that I say and, and you leave out the fucking context of, of the entire fucking discussion, you know, all in this fucking, uh, desire to make, uh, to make it appear as though I'm one of these fucking Neanderthalic men that, that, you know, actually think that, uh, that a woman deserves it when she gets, uh, whatever, you know, just, it's fucking horseshit. Anybody that listens to my podcast knows that that is not me in any shape or form. There's a reason that I taught my daughter, uh, how to, you know, basically be self-sufficient. It's, it's not because, oh, I'm worried about some guy taking advantage. It's just because I realized that, you know, just because she's a girl doesn't mean that she's fucking helpless. It doesn't mean that she doesn't need to, to, uh, learn certain things. Yeah. Will she ever have a, a realistic, uh, need to be able to throw a football or, or baseball? No, but I always thought that, that chicks that can fucking do those things are pretty cool. I don't necessarily dig women that, uh you know, that are, that are like super fucking heavy into sports. But if you can throw a baseball or a football, that's fucking cool. That means we can play catch. And that's what my daughter and I do when, you know, when my son decides that he doesn't want to play catch. So, you know, miss me with this, uh, you know, I'm fucking responsible for the rape culture shit. Cause it's horse shit. Absolute fucking horse shit. I just will not fucking, you know, I'm just one of these fucking people that's like, look, you either take responsibility for your part in shit or you shut the fuck up. 
you know, and there's this thing, I mean, you know, it's fucking horrific, this, you know, this Me Too, uh, you know, stuff that's going on, and, you know, this Harvey Weinstein, all, it's, it's fucking horrific, it, it makes me really fucking concerned for my daughter, but at the same time, there are some people that are, I am 100% certain, are just making shit up because they see an opportunity to garner a little bit of attention off of the misery of others. Am I saying that you are the one, uh, that, that you're guilty of this? No, I'm not saying that. I think that you genuinely think that, uh, you know, that you have no skin in the game as far as you getting pregnant and eventually having to get an abortion. I, I, I think that you actually believe that. But the thing is, is, you know, I don't know. I guess I could have left it alone. I guess I couldn't have, I, I could have just not said fucking anything. You know, I am a fucking cunt. I agree with that. I, I make no bones about that. I, you know, sometimes I, I open my mouth when, you know, maybe it's better to just shut the fuck up. I, I, I'll, you know, fair enough. But to label me, you know, something that I'm absolutely not is, uh, you know, to, for me, that's, for me, that's, uh, you know, that's kind of where I drew the line. It's like, you're not going to fucking accuse me of fucking, you know, something that I'm not just because you don't want to admit that you have uh, some responsibility in making sure that you don't get pregnant. You share some of that. It's two people having sex. So, uh, you know, it's a 50-50 split on, uh, you know, making sure that you don't end up with fucking parting gifts, you know. But anyway, that's that's the end of that. I'm not going to continue on any further with that. I, you know, maybe they're listening, maybe they're not. I don't know. You know who gives a shit either way. You know. I'm just I, I don't know, I just fucking, you know, I don't know. Well, you know, I said I wasn't going to fucking talk about it anymore, so so I'm done. I got a fucking um uh, I got an email from um uh, from the university. And I guess they're having a, um, uh, what is it, like, you know, like, prepare for fucking earthquake shit. Because, uh, you know, unlike Boston, um, in uh, in California, they, uh, you know, wh why am I saying this like nobody fucking knows that there's earthquakes in California? Um, you know, you gotta, I guess you gotta fucking, you know prepare in case some shit happens, and I don't know, I got this, you know, I got this email, like, oh, we're doing the big, what, what the fuck did they call it, the, uh, the great shakeout, and, uh, the, it, I, just, I don't know, I found it fucking hilarious, because, uh, the, the first, um, step, right, in, uh, you know, what you're supposed to do if an earthquake fucking strikes is, uh, it says, during an earthquake, drop down onto your hands and knees, um, what, so you can pray, uh, that you don't fucking get smashed by the ceiling? Who the fuck is getting on their hands and if an earthquake happens, I'm running. I'm running outside, I'm getting clear of any sort of fucking debris that, uh, you know, might fall on me and kill me or, or, uh, cripple me. I'm not fucking getting on my hands and knees and getting under a fucking table or a desk. I've seen I've seen people sit on desks and the entire thing fucking collapse. You're telling me it's going to hold up the weight of the fucking entire building? Go fuck yourself. Get on my hands and knees. Fuck no, I'm getting I'm getting the fuck out. If I have to throw a chair through the window and jump out of the building, I'm doing that. I'm not fucking taking cover uh under, you know, a fucking desk. That, uh, you know, that people have fucking, you know, put their gum and boogers on. I'm not doing it. I'm getting the fuck out. So, you know, um, you won't catch me if I happen to be at, uh, at the university. Um, I don't know why I keep saying the university, you know, fucking school. I don't know. I guess I'm trying to make it seem like I'm a fancy or some shit, but you know, if I happen to be at school and an earthquake happens, uh, you know, I'll be the one guy, uh, that's running out of the fucking room. You know, I don't know. I had an old, old man moment. This is how I know I'm getting old, right? 
So the other day I'm fucking, um, I'm driving, I don't know, I did I, I think I just dropped off my son or I was on my way to pick him up. I'm not really sure which. And uh, I saw this, uh, this kid, well, it's not really a kid. He's, you know, probably about 18, 19. I don't know if that qualifies as a kid. Um, he's walking down the street and he's doing this weird fucking, uh, I don't know, the way he's walking is fucking weird, right? You know, I see him from a distance. So as I get closer, I realize that the whole reason he's walking fucking weird is because he's fucking got his pants sagging below his fucking ass. Now, ordinarily, this would not fucking bug me, but I had my uh, my old man moment. And it was just like, pull up your fucking pants. Like, it can't possibly be comfortable trying to walk down the street and, uh, you know, and stride so that your pants don't completely come the fuck down. And on top of that, he's wearing skinny jeans. You don't fucking sag skinny jeans, fellas. You don't. It looks stupid. It looks like you bought a pair of jeans that just don't fit you. I get it if they're big and baggy. But, you know, obviously nobody really wears that type of shit anymore. That makes sense. You know, if your shit's baggy and it's sagging, I I understand. Because, you know, obviously the pants are too big. But if they're fucking skinny jeans and they're sagging off your ass, all it looks like, even if they fit fine, all it looks like is you bought a pair of fucking pants that are like three sizes too fucking small for you and you can't get them over your ass. I just, I, it's like, it's not even functional. And the thing is, is that, you know, only a few years ago, I, I used to fucking sag my pants. I understand it. I'm not so fucking old that I don't, I don't get it. You know, sometimes it, it feels like it fits better or it's looser or some fucking shit. I don't know. But it's not functional at all. It's not functional. If you need to run, I mean, if your pants are baggy, at least you can pick them up. You know, you can you can pull them back up over your fucking waist and and get moving pretty fucking quickly if you need to. But I imagine it if you're wearing fucking skinny jeans where it can you know it can be a little difficult sometimes to to get them over that last little fucking hump. Um, you know. I don't know, it's just, it's not fucking functional, and the fact that it, that it bugged me even for a second, it was just like, God, you're such a fucking old man now, you know, who gives a shit how this guy or this kid fucking wears his pants, why the fuck do you care, and it just suddenly dawned on me why, you know, like my mom, or, uh, you know, other people in the neighborhood would be like, you know, pull up your fucking pants, I get it now, it's just something that comes with, uh, with getting older, you're just like, fuck, you know, for me now, it's all about function. I mean, it's still, I still have fashion sense. I'm not one of these people that will just wear whatever the fuck. And I do own skinny jeans. Um, but it, 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 for me, it's, it's also, I mean, on top of being fashionable, it must be functional. I must be fucking comfortable. You know, and for the, for the guys out there that, you know, are still the, like the the last fucking holdouts on skinny jeans that are like ah you know you talking about you want to be comfortable how could it be comfortable wearing fucking pants that tight the thing about skinny jeans fellas for those of you that haven't fucking put them on is they're actually pretty fucking comfortable and a lot of them have uh you know they they look like i mean they are jeans but they have a little bit of a fucking stretch to them so they don't so they're not as tight as you as you as you would think I mean, obviously, there's some that, I mean, if you buy them too fucking small and it's, uh, you know, they're so fucking tight that you're you're wondering whether or not you'll ever be able to fucking uh, father another uh, kid or father a kid, then, you know, yeah, those are too fucking tight. But they make them in your fucking size. It's not like, you know, like you have to, uh, it's not, I mean, skinny jeans are not like jeans that are just too fucking small for you. They're just a fucking brand and they, they fit better. You don't have to get the ones that are like, uh, I think they call them spray-ons, where it looks basically like you're wearing fucking tights. You know, those those are not a good look for, for a dude. I know that some people will disagree and be like, well, you know, if you got, uh, you know, if your legs are muscular or whatever, that it, it's not a good look. It, it just, it isn't a fucking good look. You know. What the hell is that shit? Oh, my fucking... God, my fucking fax machine. I don't know why the fuck I have a fax machine. 
I really don't. But, you know, you know, that's, uh, you know, when you get to work from home, um, you know, you got to have fucking a, a fax machine, apparently. But um, I don't know. The Back to the, the, the skinny jeans um, conversation. Um, well, is it a conversation? Because it's not like you guys have any choice in uh, what I talk about. It's not like you'd be like, hey, can we, you know, can we discuss the... Uh, uh, you know, the situation in North Korea, I don't know. If I don't feel like talking about North Korea, then, you know, we're not going to talk about fucking North Korea. So just pipe down there. Um, but yeah, the, you know, the skin, give them a fucking try. You know, sometimes you have to, you have to be a little, um, I don't know, daring. Cause you know, when, I mean, before I bought them, I was like, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, that's not really for me. But then I was watching, uh, what the fuck? I was watching something on fucking YouTube. It's some guy that does like, uh, I don't know. He's like a, a fucking fat, not a fashion designer, but, um, he's just, you know, he's really into fucking men's fashion and shit. And, uh, you know, he's making some good points about, um, clothing choice and, you know, I decided to fucking try it out. So I got, you know, I, I bought a, uh, a few pairs at first and, you know, and I started kind of, you know, making sure that my clothes fit the way that they are supposed to fit. Um, and it turns out that, you know what, I mean, I've always been a fairly stylish person, but it turns out that I've, that I've only done, um, I've only managed to, I don't know, increase my fucking, uh, my toolkit of fashion. What the fuck am I talking about? Who am I? Fucking Martha Stewart over here? Um, I don't know. I had a fucking idea for, uh, for a movie. Um, I don't know where, what was, I was watching, um, I don't know. I'm kind of a fucking dork. I, I watch, uh, fucking video game playthroughs sometimes on, um, on YouTube. And, um, uh, you know, I know it sounds stupid watching somebody else play a fucking video game, but you'd be surprised at how entertaining it can be, assuming that the person playing it is personable, you know, and has uh charisma or, you know, a, a really good fucking personality. Um, that I just give you like three examples of the exact same shit. You know what I'm talking about? Um, you know, it can be entertaining. It can be interesting. You know, obviously if you don't give a shit about video games, then, you know, yeah, it probably isn't going to be entertaining to you at all. It's not going to be interesting. You're going to be like, what the fuck am I watching here? But if you are somebody that, you know, plays the occasional fucking video game, uh, these, these walkthroughs that they do sometimes are fucking, uh, you know, they're interesting to fucking watch. And I was watching, uh, was watching this guy, um, uh, his YouTube channel, by the way, is, uh, X chase money Two. Um, I was watching him play, uh, the fuck is it? Uh, the evil within two, right? That just came out. And, uh, for those of you that don't know what the game is about, it's basically, uh, you know, it's basically kind of like a zombie slash fucking, I don't know. It's a horror game. There's zombies in it. There's ghosts and weird fucking shit. It's, it's a good fucking game. Uh, I recommend, uh, at least if you're interested or if it even sounds mildly, mildly fucking interesting to you, I, I suggest you at least just, you know, watch, watch somebody do a, do a walkthrough. Um, but anyway, I was watching that shit and I got an idea for, uh, oops, shit, sorry. I got an idea for a movie and, um, you know, it is a zombie movie, but, um, And this is where you can tell that I'm borrowing heavily from this game. Because uh, in the movie, like, the main fucking uh, protagonist, um, you know, his daughter is missing. It's, you know, it's basically this sort of, uh, um, what do they call it? Um, uh, fuck, man. Um, spit it out. The, you know, like an apocalypse type of fucking situation, right? Where, you know, everything's all fucked up and, you know, people are dying and all that shit, right? Um, so, you know, he, he is, his daughter is fucking taken and, you know, he's, he's searching for her, but, um, 
you know, and along the way, as he's looking for, I'm going to give you the very condensed version of, uh, of my idea. And, uh, by the way, you know, I don't care if somebody in fucking Hollywood takes this shit. I would, I would definitely like to fucking see it. Obviously I'm not a fucking movie director. I'm not fucking Harvey Weinstein over here. Whoa. Um, well, that was fucking cheesy, but, uh, um, I don't know. So he, you know, he's looking for his fucking daughter. Uh, he's got to, you know, he's he's got to kill people, obviously, or kill zombies and shit along the way. And, uh, you know, and every now and then as he's, you know, sort of searching for his daughter, um, he, he, start, he keeps having like these sort of like grainy, like flashback of like gore and violence. You know, th- it seems like kind of familiar you know, like, like I've kind of like, oh, I've seen that, you know, like, why do, why do, why does this shit look fucking, uh, you know, familiar to me, but you know, he can't quite fucking place it. And then when he finally finds his daughter, like eventually after all the fucking carnage and shit and the, you know, the flashbacks and all of that, she he finally finds his daughter and she's just basically been ripped to fucking pieces. Right. And, uh, you know, as he's like sitting there, like fucking, uh, you know, flipping out or, or just, you know, fucking being sad, because I imagine you'd be pretty fucking sad if you, if you walked in and saw that your, uh, your child had been ripped to pieces, um, you know, he starts noticing, you know, like, he starts kind of seeing, like, objects and shit that, that were in his flashbacks, and he's just, like, he can't quite fucking, uh, you know, like, figure it out, and then, um, I don't know, somewhere in between when he's sort of losing his shit over, over losing his daughter, suddenly, like, all of the, you know, he starts to kind of piece together, um, all of the fucking flashbacks and shit, and he realizes that he's the one that's responsible for all the gore, and that, uh, basically, the last one of him, uh, you know, the last flashback is basically of him, the one that actually ripped his daughter to pieces, right? And then it's at that point where you realize that the entire movie that you've just watched is through the eyes of a fucking zombie. Doesn't that sound like a good fucking movie? I mean, if they could do it right, I know they tried to to do that bullshit with, uh, it was like a, a fucking zombie love story where the guy slowly fucking learns to talk. I mean, you know, not, not cheesy shit like that. You know, although that movie was, you know, it had its funny moments, but, um... But if it's told through, you know, if, if it's more of like a horror film, right? And the whole time you're rooting on, like, you hope this guy finds his daughter. You know, you're 100% behind him. You know, there's a lot of fucking flashbacks and shit, so it keeps the, the story going. And then when he sees his daughter, you're like, oh, fuck, all that, you know, all that work and trouble. And, you know, and, and oh, he must be going through, you know, fucking uh, hell right now seeing this. And then to just have it just sort of fucking smack you in the face that the entire time you've been watching a zombie go through its fucking day. To me, that sounds like an awesome fucking movie. You know, it's definitely a new take on things. I don't think there's another, you know, zombie perspective type fucking movie out there. And even if there is, usually, you know, at some point you're taken out of the fucking zombies perspective and given the perspective of, you know, somebody else. And, you know, I don't know. Just to me, I mean, I don't know. Am I crazy? Does that not sound like a good fucking movie? I don't know. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Anyway, how long have we been talking? 40, almost 45 minutes. You know, I think I'm going to end it here. Um, It is Thursday, um, October fucking... 19th I think yeah October 19th 2017 for anybody listening to this shit in the future although why you would be listening to this I don't know you know maybe I ended up on uh I don't know TMZ the fucking guy that uh you know wouldn't submit to the girl for you know I don't know I don't I don't want to get back into that shit you know if you're listening you know I, I don't know I, I stand firm with my point, but if I upset you, I apologize. But, you know, I still, I, I you know, I'm not saying you're right. I'm just saying that, you know, you know, I don't like fucking pissing people off. I mean, I, I talk a lot of shit. Um, you know, I stand behind, you know, the things that I fucking say. It's not like I'm just talking shit for, you know, comedic value. Um, 
But at the same time, I don't like fucking pissing people off. I don't like fucking upsetting people. She genuinely felt, you know, that she had been violated. You know, I could have just kept my fucking mouth shut. I could have not said anything. I could have just let it be, you know, I could have, I could have not been a cunt. I will admit that. But I, I don't feel like I'm wrong about you having some responsibility. So, you know, I don't know. Anyway, if, if you're, if you're listening and you're probably not, I assume some of your minions are. Um, you let her know that, um, you know, I don't know. You tell her whatever you want. I'm sure that you've already cooked up, you know, your own fucking narrative that, uh, you know, here he is again, fucking not, uh, you know, he's abusing me, even though all I'm doing is disagreeing with you. You know, I, I wasn't aware that disagreeing, you know, I'm getting right back into it. I'm going to stop here. Anyway, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Um, I hope you're having a good week or had a good week. Eh, it's almost the fucking weekend, right? Um... But yeah, I'll try and get you guys another podcast tomorrow if I can. Uh, Hopefully I won't have to fucking spend about 20 minutes of it trying to explain why I'm not such a fucking cunt. Um, But yeah, so, but you know, I'll try. But if I don't, then, you know, fuck, I hope you have a good weekend and I'll uh, I'll be back on fucking Tuesday. All right. All right. Fucking uh, just like always, don't take any shit and go fuck yourself. Peace, bitches.